going on guys so today I'm doing a video because I was tagged from Evan uh, over at Rivers Edge Cutlery uh, he did a video on three knives for life and the idea behind <laughs> picking your your top three knives is whatever scenario you can come up with you can only have three knives for the rest of your life now I don't know the rules to this little game <laughs> which is definitely fun and I have to say uh, I don't like it I don't like it one bit I get asked this Every month, at least, for years, what's your favorite knife? That is a tough question because I don't have an answer. I really don't have a favorite knife. Um, I continuously get the question, what's the best knife? I don't know. The one you like, I suppose? There's millions and millions of knives out there. So it is, it is almost ridiculous <laughs> to suggest that there's one best one. You know what I mean? So, uh, But, you know, I'm going to play along. I'm going to play along with this because I think it could be kind of fun, get a conversation going, and maybe get people um, talking about knives, which is always a good thing. So uh, what I did for this uh, little game is, first of all, I limited it to just folding knives. Now, of course, there's other styles of knives. I would have my favorite three or best three balisongs, best three OTFs, best three side opening automatics, best three large fixed blades, best three medium fixed blades, best three small fixed blades, like for neck knives. The list would go on and on and on for each individual genre of knife, right? Their purpose, what people have them for, things like that. But for this video, I'm just gonna stick with the, or my top three specifically folding knives that I would keep if I had to get rid of all of my knives. And I think the scenarios that he put in the video is your significant other said you have to get rid of all of them, except for three. <laughs> Luckily, my significant other loves knives as well, so she has more than three herself. Uh, so that'll never happen. Uh, or if you had like a house fire, which, you know, knock on wood, God forbid I have a house fire, but uh, quite honestly, I would just be left with my all metal knives, <laughs> right? I just have to clean them up pretty good and resharpen them. Um, but in all seriousness, whatever the scenario you come up with in your mind, you have to pick your favorite three. So not only am I limiting it to just folding knives to make it easier, but also limiting it to just three folding knives that I currently have to show you for this video. Because, you know, there's, there's some other contenders that I've had before but don't currently have. So let's jump into it. My favorite, I suppose, is what this comes down to. My favorite, most versatile, three knives. Number one. I have to agree with Evan in that the PM3 has to be on that list. Um, uh, I do love the PM2. I think that is a huge contender, but because of one of the other knives, I went with a smaller option. So really, more times than not, I would say the PM2, just having a little bit more of that blade, having a little bit more handle, it could be more versatile. There's a lot more cutting uh, stuff you could do with that particular knife as opposed to the three. But generally speaking, the, uh, the PM3 is just awesome for uh, for carry as well. That's a big consideration here is to, to literally carry this knife. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is the all blacked out version in uh, CPM S30V. It's just a fantastic knife. You can open and close in a million different ways. I've done videos on that before. It's just, it's awesome. It, it slices extremely, extremely well. It has a very fine point on it. It's the um, compression lock is just super easy to use one handed, super smooth. It's just overall a fantastic knife, both the PM3 or, of course, the original bigger brother, the PM2. Uh, honorable mentions have to go to the original Spyrocos before these, um, you know, PM2 and 3s came out. When I was first getting to the knife scene, of course, it was the, uh, the Delica and the Enduras. And same deal. The Delica was a small brother. The Endura was a large brother. They were locked back knives, just fantastic. Everyone loved them. Everyone had them. Everyone used them. As time went on and they came out with the compression lock and stuff, uh, the interest kind of swapped over to these. But that is definitely one of my favorite three knives of all time that I currently own right now to make a video on. Number two, number two has to be the Cold Steel Biggins. Now, when I say that, I just basically mean any huge Cold Steel knife because they're all pretty much awesome, but specifically the original Voyager line, okay? Now, obviously you would pick whatever size floats your boat, this one um, being their largest, in VG1, by the way, not VG10, VG1, just a fantastic um, knife. This, of course, is the X2 Voyager, uh, even their, their medium, because they didn't make a small. They made a medium, they made a large, they made an extra large, and they made a 2X. 
And uh, this is the original handle design that has just the smoother handles that curve in. You can, uh, of course, choke up on this. You can use this like a regular old knife. Just because we have a, a massive blade on here doesn't mean you have to use all of it at all times. You can cut down here, you could just use the tip. Um, but really cool, and of course, you could choke down. You know, if God forbid you needed to use this for self-defense, there's so much reach here. This is absolutely devastating. Now, just for reference, I did break out one of my other uh, bigger cold steel knives. This is, of course, one of the newer Voyagers. Uh, this one has a Tanto blade, but I wanted to kind of take this out to give you a reference as to the new handle style. Just in case you're not a cold steel fanboy or something, and you don't know every in and out of the, all these knives, this was the original handle design, and now it has more of a squared off type deal, um, which is nice though. It has a the good finger choil. In this particular grip, my pinky lands in the top of that finger choil, so it's just really, really comfortable in the hand. But of course, choking down on this one, even better, I would say, just because they have dedicated finger choils towards the, the base here, right? So this one lands in my ring and middle finger. It's just really, really nice. But that's basically uh, my choice for one of my top threes of all time would be the X2 original Voyager in clip point, this exact knife, which I've had before three times. I had my original, I got rid of it. Actually, the first large cold steel knife I ever had was the um, the X2 Vaquero, which was awesome. That has you know a, a you know double recurve blade. Mine was fully serrated, I believe, and I cut my hand really bad with that knife when I first got it because I was a, a much younger kid and I was doing things with my knives I shouldn't be doing. I don't do that anymore. But uh, but yeah, it's just super super cool. I love it, and this is again kind of why I went with the PM3 as opposed to the uh, the PM2. Just because hey, if I have three knives and I want to carry a large one, does it get much larger? It does, but there's not a whole lot of options out there. So there you go. So number three for the list is, drum roll please, that's right, a Chris Reeves Sabenza. Now, this could be any Chris Reeves Sabenza. There's a ton of them out there. But this was my original, my first, which I still have today. And this is a small, classic Sabenza with the Micarta scales. All right, um, I've had this knife for many, many years. And as the story goes, which I, I've said before, but it was a long time ago, it took me 10 years to buy this knife. Uh, for 10 full years, I've heard about Chris Reeve knives, specifically the Sabenza, which was like their staple. And I wanted one and wanted one and wanted one. And at some point after my grandfather passed away, I decided to do it. And uh, this has so much emotional um, meaning to me. You know, it was like, it, at the time, it was kind of a way to distract myself from the sadness that my grandfather had passed. Uh, my grandfather was a huge fan of ducks and owls, and uh, I had a custom sheath made by a sheath ma maker in Canada. I want to say it was Vest Leatherworks. Um, his make mark is here, but, uh, you know, I don't know. It looks like a V and a G. It's been so long, I don't remember, but that's standing out to me for some reason, Vest Leatherworks. But anyway, he did a phenomenal job on this. I wanted ray skin insert. I wanted a little owl here. All right, it's just super cool. I mean, I have a video on this, this knife and the sheath, but. But anyway, I wanted to get this sheath made so that I can carry this uh, closed here with the pocket clip, as you can see. It accommodates the pocket clip here. Uh, so I could do a horizontal carry on the belt if I wanted to, like want to class it up a little bit. Or I could just use it with the pocket clip as is, you know, right in the pocket. But just super classic knife. Um, probably a lot harder to get these days. There's been so many different generations and changes and alterations to the Sabenza. There was a ton of variety over the years as far as size and very slight changes. But... Overall, it's just hard to not put this one on the list. Again, it, having the emotional attachment was definitely a consideration, but just in general, having any Sabenza, large, small, old, new, they're just fantastic knives. There's a reason why people talk about them over and over and over again. So I'll give you a quick little uh, closer look here in case you haven't seen this before. And yes, it is scratched up and a little banged up here and there because I do use it. I do carry it and use it occasionally. But uh, yeah, that is the, uh, the classic from Chris Reeve knives just awesome so that concludes my video for my top three knives for life as far as specifically folders spyroco pm3 chris reeve sabenza classic and of course the 2xl <laughs> can we get in in frame here um cold steel voyager the original just uh you know super hard to really just pick three i have so many different favorite knives that the list I, I can have my top 100 knives of the thousands that i've handled literally so to just come up with three, it's pretty tough. So that's it guys, thanks for watching. Post in the comments if you could possibly do so, your favorite three knives that you have owned. 
Um, you know, I have a long laundry list of knives that I want to try and it's continuously changing. And as soon as I get certain knives on the list, you know, new knives make, uh, take up their place. You know, there's probably at any given time, 50 different knives that I'm just kind of looking for, you know, and there's hundreds that I've seen that are kind of interested in. So it's just, I mean, really to, to come up with three, this is the best I could have possibly done for this particular situation. Again, narrowing it down to just folders and narrowing it down to just knives that I, I have and currently use. All three of these knives still end up in rotation occasionally. Um, the cold steel, the least probably, but there are occasions where I have, I wanna say I have like maybe five or six, like, you know, super size cold steel folders, uh, some old, some newer. And uh, when I have to go to different states that I'm not allowed to have my firearm, I always have one of those with me, all right? So this does still get some, some pocket time, but more in the sense of, you know, defense. I'm not really taking it out, because when I do carry one of these, I'm usually carrying a smaller folder anyway for actual, you know, cutting work and EDC chores. Um, but that's kind of like my go-to. I can't have a gun. I want to have a big old blade that I can easily conceal. So that's the mindset there. Uh, they don't get used as much as some of the smaller ones, but occasionally I do. I'll, I'll EDC my uh, PM3 here, and I will EDC, of course, the classic Sebenza. Um, just awesome. Awesome, awesome knives. So thanks, Evan, for sparking up the, uh, the topic of uh, the top three. Again, it's super hard for any knife lover to really just come up with their, their favorite three or their favorite 10 or their favorite 100. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, if you have a knife collection of, I don't know, let's say five knives, maybe you could pick your favorite one of the five, but I've been around the block and uh, there's so many awesome knives out there for so many different reasons. It really is tough to just kind of pick three. But there you go, that's the best I can do for today with the knives I currently have available. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the video. Again, post down in the comment section, maybe your favorite knife or, or top three knives and for what reasons. So that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I will see you guys tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.